Hi everyone, it's Aga from EurekaCrystalBeats.com and I'm here with another fun beading tutorial for you. Before I get started, just a quick reminder to check out the rest of our channel and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so we always know when we're posting new content. In today's video, I will show you the absolute basic stitch of bead crochet or crochet in general. And this is a stitch with which we will be able to make an entire necklace. So let me show you the materials. Here is a crochet hook. This is one millimeter crochet hook and this is what I would recommend for the cord that we're going to be using. This is Eslon micro cord which is 0.25 millimeters and um, one millimeter uh, crochet hook is perfect for this and for Toho Amie cord as well. This is what I like to use. But if you're a beginner, you may use a larger one, like 1.5 and 1.75. They will be linked down below. You can also use a smaller one, but I don't like using a smaller one for this kind of cord personally, because it kind of um, just gets hold of some of the cord and it gets frayed and it's not so nice. So I would recommend one millimeter crochet hook or larger, up to maybe 1.75 millimeters. So that's the hook, that's the cord. This is Eslon micro cord. And this will be the best for this particular purpose because if we use, for example, 0.5 millimeter cord, which is Soho Amiet cord, and that will turn out a little bit more stiff and less delicate. And I really want a flowy effect to show you. You're also going to need this uh, lovely Tierra cast set of charms with the phases of the moon that really inspired me to do this, really. And beads. And here I have these round beads. They are rose gold coated. And um, this is one pack and one pack will be Absolutely enough. Here I have set out two separate beads and these will be for the ends of our necklace. Because in this particular model that I'm going to show you how to make, you will be tying it behind your neck and so this doesn't require any clasps or any jump rings or anything like that. So this is a, the most basic thing that you can do with just a few um, ingredients, basically. Uh, for the beads, you cannot use any needles at all, but I will be using a big eye needle and you have two types of big eye needles available. This is one type. It has big, big, big eye all along the length. And this is a different kind with this big eye in the end. And it's very flexible, as you can see. I'll be using this one just because I find it more convenient. Okay, um, the only thing that I will be needing, but this is not necessary, just secure the thread after I tie it off. This is just a regular lighter because this cord melts, so that will be an easy way to secure it. Okay, let's start. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to sort out these beads. I have uh, two already uh, set away for the uh, ends of the necklace, but I will also put four in here in between the charms so that they don't hang too close together so in between each of the charms there's going to be a bead so that's minus four i'm going to be making a necklace that will be short this will be basically just around the neck maybe a little bit lower there will be some adjustment going on so you don't have to worry about that but for a pretty short one i'm going to put 12 beads for each side of the necklace. So I'm just putting 12 in each group, so to say, for each side of the necklace. So that's my first 12. As you can see, there's still plenty left. So, okay, now it's time to put it on our string, on our cord. And so I put my cord into this big eye needle. Well, first I have to open it, obviously. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to string this first dozen of beads onto the cord. 
And I'm doing this because you see in B crochet you have to have all of your beads on your string or your cord uh, when you start so that all the sequence is there when you start crocheting. Now I'm going to put th this se sequence on my cord and you just need to pay attention to the direction in which you're putting your needle uh, through these charms because you want them to be um, in this nice sequence as they're intended to be and not, for example, like this. So you can start on either side of this. I'm starting here. So one charm one bead, the next charm, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the sequence is already on my cord. Now it's time for the second half of the beads. Okay, so this is basically my entire necklace, but now I'm going to crochet it into a more refined beads than just, you know, beads on a string. So what you do is you take your end. I have taken out the needle, by the way. So I take my cord and the end is over here. And I put it so that the end is in front of uh, my crocheting hook. So this is my end side. And I put this behind that other cord so that it's like it's 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 behind it now up just up like this so this is what it looks like first i put it behind and then i've reached up and now I'm going into this loop that I made before. So I'm basically making a knot on top of that other cord. So, so it slides nicely. And actually I think it will be a little bit easier if you get a little bit closer over here and I show it to you while uh, everything is flat. So. How you tie uh, an initial slip knot around your hook before you start. So it, like the thread goes first behind the hook, then it goes above the hook. So like the end goes over here, like that. And what you do is you put this front thread, the one with the end behind, like this. Then you put it up so that there's kind of a loop, as you can see. And then you put, <laughs> let me just try to make it easy. Then you put the end of that thread from behind through that very loop that you created like that so we're basically tying a knot with one thread on top of the other thread so that it can slide because if you now tie it you'll notice it slides very easily. So this is our slip knot. And you could also call it a sliding knot because well, it slides. Anyway, the way I'm going to hold my uh, crochet hook is on this side. So uh, left-handed, but I think my grandma, when she used to uh, teach me that, she used to uh, teach me holding the hook in my right hand so I'm not actually sure if I'm doing the right-handed or left-handed way uh, so if you're learning it probably won't make any difference anyhow uh, the way we're going to be holding our uh, cord is I really like to do it in a particular way because it's easier to slide it in between my fingers as I go so I go in front of my pinky finger 
behind my uh, ring finger, in front of my middle finger, behind my index finger. And this is how I hold it. Now that we crochet, it's going to just, you know, slide and slide and slide the more we need it. So it's going to be easier. So this is just a little tip for how to hold the cord or thread so that it's more convenient. Again, in front of my pinky finger, behind my ring finger, in front of my middle finger, and it's just kind of a weave in between my fingers. Okay, so actually the first thing you're going to do is to make a long chain with which you're going to be able to tie your necklace behind your neck and uh, adjust the length of it. So now uh, how you do the chain, you basically just hook the hook behind your thread or cord and you uh, slip it through this loop that you already have on your hook. I already did two of this. Let's make another one. This is how you do it. So you just hook and slide. And depending on what size of hook you're using, the chain is going to be different um, kind of sizes. And at first you might have a problem with making it too tight, especially if you're using a very small hook. So you may just, you know, squeeze all together, which you shouldn't. You should just leave it a little space because as you can see, there's a lot of adjustment and regulation going on. So you can make really large loops and you can make really small loops. So just try to keep it a tiny little bit loose, not too tight, not too loose, but just a little bit loose. It's a matter of you know, getting used to it. And you just go like this. Okay, I have roughly five inches of chain here. I think this will be enough to conveniently and comfortably tie the necklace behind my neck in a pretty bow tie. And now it's time to add our beads. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take a section of beads. Right now I'm going to take one just to show you. And so I have one bead on my cord here and I just hook the hook on the cord right next to that bead. And if, in this case, the loop that you have on your hook, it's going to have to be a little bit bigger because this is what you're going to do. You're just, you're just going to do a regular chain, but a big one. So this is our loop here. It's larger and I'm going to do three chain in between each of the beads. So one, two, three, and I'm going to add another bead here. And again, I'm stretching this a loop that I have on my hook so that it covers more or less the length of the bead. And I just put my cord through that loop and make three more chain. And now as I go, I can pick up more of the beads at once and I just hold them up with this finger and hook my hook on the cord right here, and then three regular chains. And another bead. See, it's that simple and you just go on. The only problem is uh, maybe these beads sliding off. So you might want to take one at a time if that's more comfortable for you or several at a time and just hold them up with this finger as you go. So this is what I'm going to do basically all the time. Even as I reach the middle with the uh, Tierra cast uh, charms, I'm going to do the very same thing. Maybe I'll meet you there to show you that you should do just the very same thing. You just adjust kind of the size of that loop that you have here. 
And that's all you need to do. And you're going to end up with a really pretty beaded chain. Okay, so I reached this spot and that was really quick, like three minutes. So I've reached the spot where I'm going to be adding my charms. So I did my three chain and now I just make a loop behind the charm and add it just like a bead, as if it was a bead. So uh, you will need to make a little larger loop than a regular chain, but smaller than if you were adding a bead. So again, now it's going to be a bead, so three chain, then I add that bead in between, three more chain, and that other, the next charm. So the loop is larger than like a regular one for a chain. That's smaller than for a bead. You can even make it, you know, I'm gonna make it a little bit larger because I want it to dangle nicely. So this is how big the loop is. And now one, two, three, and bead. And you just continue until you've made your entire necklace. So I have all my beads already on the chain. Now it's time to add just another five inches of just this tie off chain. And it will be time to just add these two kind of weight beads because we want to weight down the ends of the necklace so that they dangle nicely after we tie them off. Okay, let me just finish this chain. Okay, I have my extra five inches of just chain and now I just make maybe one more loop. Now, how do you finish a chain so that it doesn't kind of fall apart? Because, you know, when you pull this, it's all going to fall apart. So what I do, well, I didn't tell you, but you're probably also going to need scissors. I cut off this tail here and I just put the end through this final loop and that's it. This is how you basically tie off crocheting. You just put the end in the loop and that's it. Now let's weight the ends down. I'm going to add one bead on each, uh, on each end. And since these beads have pretty large holes, as you can see, I'm not going to hang them just here on the cord. I'm going to hang them here on the chain and I'm going to tie a knot on the chain itself, like on the end of the chain here, so that the knot is kind of larger. You can use a special tool for making knots right there. And now it's secure. As you can see, maybe I'll move it a little bit back. In any case, we're going to melt it and melt the end this way or another. So I just take my lighter and I melt the end. So that nothing can fall off. Like this. Because tying it off is quite secure, but I always like to melt the end additionally. So that it kind of all fuses together. Okay, the other bead. And again, I, I'm tying a knot on the chain itself so that it's bigger and can stop the bead successfully. Okay, I'm gonna melt the very end. Now it's all fused together and it should be pretty secure. Okay, 
And basically, this is it. This is the necklace. It will look really nice on the neck and you can uh, adjust the length using these ends because you just tie it off. And now let me tell you a little bit about some personalization and some customization options for this because there's lots. First of all, you can make the uh, ends longer so that you can tie it off at different lengths and making longer or shorter or anything like this. You cannot use the charms at all and you can just focus on the beads and you can just make a beaded chain instead of a chain with charms in the center. You can also use like a one big charm to uh, place in the center so that it will hang more like this. Especially if the charm is heavy. Uh, you can also increase and decrease the distances between the beads and the charms. You can just do one chain, you can do five chain, you can do basically whatever you want. So it will have a different look. You can use different beads, obviously, and technically you can also make it into a bracelet because if you look at it right here, it's even this long. So if you tie it off in here, it's a bracelet with charms. But in general, uh, you can make it longer to make a more layered bracelet. But for this one, I think it will look best on your neck. So this was the tutorial. I hope you liked it. All of the materials that I have shown to you today can be found at EurekaCrystalBeads.com. We also carry more sizes of crochet hooks and also different models. We have those with very convenient uh, kind of rubbery grips or handles. So that's uh, very comfortable to hold. This is just a regular uh, cheapest one that I have. But I do recommend the ones with the nice grip. Stay tuned for other big crochet tutorials because there are going to be more. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye!